Thank you. Uh, it's good to see you here uh, after the interesting uh, wine session yesterday evening. Um, I'm Aaron van der Born from MSD Animal Health, and I would like to talk about uh, empty capsids as an alternative platform for uh, vaccination. I'm happy that the previous speaker gave already some introduction here, so that helps me to go quicker through the slides. But before I do, I want to acknowledge a couple of uh, people that were heavily involved in this. Um, for us as a company, it was a great opportunity, or it is a great opportunity, to work with these leading groups from the UK. Um, it's the Purbright Institute, headed by um, this, this work headed by Brian Charleston. Uh, we have the um, Oxford University, University of Reading, and um, the whole consortium is uh, sponsored with a translational grant from the Wellcome Trust. So first, some background. Um, uh, obviously, there's a need for uh, new vaccines. Um, it's not that the, the current vaccines do not work. Uh, if you have high potency vaccines, you will get uh, sufficient protection. The problem with the current vaccines is that uh, you have to produce them, as you know, in high containment facilities. And at the same time, um, you need also a, an expensive cold chain to deliver the products to the, to the customer. Uh, and nevertheless, um, for regions where vaccination is the only way to control the disease, uh, the availability is poor and uh, uh, with alternative platforms maybe uh, this uh, problem can be solved. So to come back at the uh, instability, um, this is nicely shown by this um, picture here, um, taken from one of our collaborators. Um, so you have the 146S intact capsid, uh, but due to the inherent instability of the capsids, upon storage, heat or pH treatment, uh, the capsid falls apart into the 12S pentamers which is nicely illustrated by the EM uh, figures uh, below. And of course, if you, if you are the customer and uh, uh, after long-term storage or, or uh, when the vaccine has been at the airport for a long time in, in, in the sun, if you get this, this part uh, will not give you the protection you expect from, from a good vaccine. So as the uh, alternative platform, we looked, as the previous speaker, into uh, virus-like particles or empty capsids. Um, and what we believe is that if you produce the empty capsids, also called the 75S capsids, we get sufficient protection because for the immune system, the immune system sees the outside of, of the capsid. And uh, it doesn't matter if this is an inactivated live virus or uh, a, a recombinantly produced uh, a, a capsid. Uh, the advantages here are is that we, you can produce this in uh, standard facilities, allowing the production at multiple sites around the globe easily without the biosecurity uh, uh, constraints. And um, another thing is that uh, you can introduce mutations in the capsid that allows uh, us to stabilize the capsid. Uh, because in live viruses, and you cannot uh, manipulate the structure too much because the virus needs a kind of flexibility. And because this is not a live virus, you can manipulate it uh, quite heavily if you want. So I won't go into much detail because the previous speaker already introduced this, but we, we want to express the uh, structural region of the genome of FMDV and uh, to make these uh, capsids here. And to zoom in on that process a little bit more, so we take the P1 structure and the 3C protease, um, and as the previous speaker already mentioned, this protein is cytotoxic. So we have done similar things to minimize the cytotoxicity of the 3C protease. Uh, by one point mutation, you reduce the activity. And uh, what we use here is the uh, uh, HIV frame shift instead of the iris element. Uh, once you do this, it works uh, nicely illustrated by this figure here. Um, these are the empty capsids of the A22 uh, strain. 
So with the group in Oxford, we were able to uh, look in more details, uh, detail into the capsid and um, we get uh, high resolution uh, structure data. And uh, if you look at the structure here, the green, in green there are two uh, VP2 proteins uh, facing each other. And um, you can find amino acids that are facing each other. And by manipulating um, the, the location of these amino acids, you can find situations where uh, there, there can be uh, electrostatic interactions that would stabilize the interaction between the two VP2 proteins. So here you have an example for O1 Manissa. Uh, this is another example. And if you include a cysteine at position 93 in, in VP2, you can even have a physical connection, like a cysteine bridge. And you can imagine that such a bridge on many locations in the capsid will really stabilize the structure. So this, this hopefully would solve then the instability problem of the capsids. Uh, and um, we already have so, uh, data and proof that this will work. And for reference, I would uh, like you to uh, refer to this uh, paper. So now about the production and characterization of the uh, capsids. So as I mentioned, we use the baccalovirus expression system for this purpose. Uh, obviously, high yields are important. Um, it's nice that within a laboratory setting, you can produce uh, capsids purify them, concentrate them, and get nice EM pictures. But if you want to make this a commercial success, the yields have to be high so the cost price can be low. So we've, we invested heavily in improving the, um, um, the, the yields by looking at many, many factors, uh, like uh, the type of insect cells, the, the baccalovirus factor, when to harvest. Um, we looked at the expression cassette itself, uh, harvest method, downstream processing, all, all kinds of those things. And with, by doing this, we improve the yield significantly up to 100 fold. It's a bit of a busy slide, um, but it summarizes uh, a little uh, the, the analysis we are doing on the, um, on the capsids we produce. We do it either by Western blotting, and I hope you can appreciate that the pattern for a VLP preparation and a classic uh, antigen uh, is the same. Um, we do sucrose bending, and in the range where you would expect the capsids to bend in this sucrose layer, we see nicely that the capsids are present there, uh, the recombinant capsids. We use ELISA to um, to determine the concentration of the uh, of the capsids, and this is an EM picture of a recent batch, which is not concentrated. So these are the capsids we get without uh, 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 concentration, and I think this looks good. So then uh, we uh, performed uh, guinea pig immunization experiments, and um, for this we use five animals per group. Uh, the vaccines we use contain a fixed amount of volume, um, so we're not using a fixed concentration at the moment, but we will look into that just for, for proof of concept. We use a fixed volume for now uh, with adjuvant though. Um, we included four serotypes, O, A, Asia 1 and SAT 2 and blood was taken from the animals four weeks post-vaccination, and we do a VNSA on serum. Um, and here are the results. We always included a classic vaccine as the reference, and for most of the strains we uh, included, you can see there is uh, a similar response, VN response, uh, for the VLPs as compared to the classic uh, antigen. Uh, although there's some variation in the height, so that's probably a, a VN uh, test thing. But we, we will uh, compare, of course, within the group. And as you can also see that sometimes uh, we see differences in the mutants, but this could also reflect some expression level differences. The only thing we struggle a little bit with at, at the moment is the set 2 um, but this is a bit of a difficult one at the moment. From the five groups, for instance, we get a few non-responders while the others, other animals respond well. So we don't know exactly what's going on there, but we will look into that. 
Uh, cattle vaccination challenge experiments um, are planned and will happen soon. And with that, uh, I would like to summarize. Um, so uh, we are able to produce uh, 75 S capsids and we can produce them at high yields. And um, we, we can manipulate the capsids in such a way that we can make them more heat and storage stable. And um, our first animal trial data shows that uh, these capsids can be an interesting alternative to the current uh, uh, inactivated vaccines that are available. And with that, I'd like to thank you for your attention and I'm happy to take any questions. Yeah, sorry, sorry about that. <laughs> um, yes, thanks a lot for the presentation and there is already one question. Wait a minute, I'll give you. Have you uh, measured the stability, uh, long-term storage or any of those parameters on uh, the formulation, although you said there is no adjuvant, it's just a pure no. protein injected in the animal, but have you looked at uh, stability prior to that experiment? or in guinea pigs following a storage? Uh, yes, we have done, at least in Oxford, they have done extensive testing of stability improvement. Um, and we can see that we can treat the capsids at higher temperature compared to, to the non-mutants. So we can raise the temperature before the, the structures fall apart. But also in vaccine formulations, we have done stability testing and um, some preliminary data shows that after six months of storage in a vaccine formulation, uh, we still get a good uh, VN response in the guinea pigs. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so you have BLPs for the several serotypes, right? And in all of them, you stabilize the same way with the amino acid in position 93 in BP2, or you, you do a different kind of stabilization for each serotype? There are different ways to stabilize the structures, but for now uh, we focus on the position 93 in uh, VP2. But for every strain, we have to look what is the best amino acid at that position. Oh. Yeah. Any other questions? Can I? Can I just ask you? You said you worked on fixed volume, but you compare the classical in the vaccination for the guinea pigs you said classical so that's the, the classical vaccine with your dose but how exactly do you compare do you inject full cattle dose in, in the guinea pig as a comparison or how do you really compare in these initial trials i think there's a, a relevant question in these initial trials we um uh, took only um vaccines by volume uh, so we don't know exactly what the micrograms are put in, uh, but for the, uh, the upcoming uh, cattle vaccination challenge trial, we will certainly have a doses that's relevant, that's now in a current vaccine, uh, to make this a more relevant comparison. Yeah. Okay. But for now, it's only a volume based. Okay. Thanks a lot. So if there are no more questions, then I hand over to my colleague. Thanks a lot.